welcome to Interis's 5 Minute Tutorials. My name is Mark Pierce, and in this session we're going to be looking at network access control. This is just one of a series of tutorials where we'll be looking at security and compliance and how you can use network access control to police your infrastructure. In today's IT environment, security is still a key criteria for all enterprises. Network access control is one of the tools you can utilise to ensure that your infrastructure is protected from the various worms and attacks and outages that are caused on today's networks. Network security and compliance mandates that you know about all the devices connected to your network infrastructure. Not just PCs and servers, but IP phones, video surveillance equipment and even uh, building control systems are all becoming IP enabled today. When we look at end system compliance, what a user needs to do their job, and what a user wants to do their job, are very often completely different. What we're going to demonstrate today is how an Interis's NAC solution can ensure the health and integrity of an end system before it's allowed to access the network, even if that's a guest user on your IT infrastructure. We're also going to demonstrate how we can ensure that your user population doesn't run applications on their PCs that you don't want them to. In this example today, we're going to look at how we police the use of Skype on an infrastructure. So let me hand over to Julian Critchlow, one of our senior systems engineers in the Enterprise Laboratory. Julian's going to demonstrate implementing and policing network security and compliance with the Interis's NAC solution. Julian. Thank you, Mark. In this demonstration of Interis's network access control, we're going to show the compliance aspects that the solution can offer. So we have a client PC that is connected to the network, authenticated via 802.1x, and as we can see by the pings on the screen, it is pinging its local gateway and a FTP server on a separate VLAN, so we have full network connectivity. So what we're going to demonstrate now is the client PC going outside the compliance regulations set down by the organisation. In this instance, we're going to load the Skype application and simulate a user using the you know, organization's infrastructure to make personal phone calls during business hours. So, we will load up the Skype application. So, the Skype application is logged in and the Interis's network access control has been configured to look for the Skype application and make a quarantining decision based on this application running as a process on the Windows XP machine we have here. So within 30 seconds, the Interisys Network Access Control agents will actually quarantine this end PC and we'll see our pings to the network stop. As we can see now, the pings have stopped on the network and we've been placed in a, a quarantine role uh, which limits our access to the network. What will happen is the agents will inform us of this quarantine via the pop-up balloon in the bottom right hand corner and when we click on that link, we'll be taken to the remediation website so we can attempt to remediate our problems. By clicking on the link, we are taken to the remediation website. However, if the user had just launched the web browser, their web traffic would have been redirected to the same location, as this is part of the conditions of the quarantine role that has been applied to them. From here, we can start the remediation process. So here we are at the remediation website. It is currently customised to show Interis's logos, but for every organisation, different banners and the web page is fully customisable, so the look and feel can be configured to match your organisation. In the remediation centre we can clearly see the reasons why this user has been placed into quarantine. The Skype EXE process is running. We also have a button shown that where the user can re-attempt network access as a part of a self-remediation process. So what we can do here is exit the Skype application and click the re-attempt network access button. This will put the user through the self-remediation process and now that they have remediated themselves they will be given network access. The remediation centre informs the user of their current status. Here we can see that we are being scanned by the Interisys Network Access Control Agent and when the scan is complete we will be allowed access back to the network. The scan is now completed and we've been granted network access and our web traffic has been directed back to their original page. Excellent, thank you Julian. So, using network access control from Interisys we've just demonstrated a number of things. Firstly, how easy it is to assess the health of the device before it attaches to the network using both a network-based scan, an agent-based scan, or even a combination of the two. On top of that, we've also shown how easy it is to provision temporary network access control for guest users and contractors. 
We also showed, with the help of customised screens and web shots, that when a user does have a problem access to the network, they can self-remediate by using those web screens without burdening the help desk at all. And finally, we provided an exceptional level of visibility. What devices are connected to what ports, what applications they're using, what status they're in, and a whole host of other information. So as you can see, network access control forms a critical part of any security architecture. In our next tutorial, we're going to look at how we utilise network access control to provide a level of visibility and even more assessment within the network architecture. If you want more information on this topic or any others, please go to the Interesis website, www.interesis.com. Thank you.